Hello folks, Sergey from Core here. And today I'm bringing you a quick tutorial that will show how you can bake attributes generated in Grasshopper into your Rhino geometry. And in order to do this, we're going to be using TT Toolbox version 2.0. And what I have here is a very quick definition that generates this tower. It has some floor plates and it has some facade panels. And let's say that we want to generate some information about each of those floor plates and each of those facade panels and save it to our Ryan document. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, let's say we um, want to avoid losing all of the parametric information that we currently have in Grasshopper when we bake stuff out into Rhino, say for purposes of automating a fabrication workflow or for QAQC, or maybe baking geometry out as just an intermediate step in the larger parametric pipeline. Whatever the reason may be, it's always good not to lose data when you move between different phases of your project. And the Toolbox version 2.0 is going to help us with that. So first of all, let's create some data that we'll then try and save to our Rhino doc. I'm going to keep it simple. Um, let's create an area component, and we're just going to grab the area of each floor plate and the centroid of each um, of the poly surfaces, or I guess uh, just regular surfaces that we have here. And we can see that, right, we have uh, all of our areas right here. And then I'm going to create a deconstruct point component just to pull out the Z height of each floor. And this will basically just tell us how high off the ground this piece of geometry is. Now, in order to be able to bake this geometry to Rhino, we have to create what's known as an attribute. I'm going to grab the construct attributes component from the document tab uh, inside of TT Toolbox. And here we can see among many inputs, the two that we're interested in are K, uh, which stands for keys, and B that stands for values. So this allows us to feed key value pairs that will become our attributes. So first let's create the headers or the keys uh, for our attribute definition. So um, I'm going to right click on the panel and disable multi-line data. And then I'm going to say area as our first attribute name and then let's call it altitude. So we're going to feed these into the keys input and the component immediately complains saying that to add user data to attributes, both keys and values must be provided. So now we have to feed it values in sort of a specific format uh, in order to create attributes that we need properly. So we have all of this information from 59 total floor plates. Um, so essentially we want in every branch that we feed to the value input, we want to have the same number of values that we have keys. So in this case, two. And the way we're going to do this is by using a weave component that lets us, well, weave <laughs> two streams of data. And I'm going to plug in our areas into uh, input zero and then our altitudes into in input number one. And the pattern for weaving is zero one, which is exactly what we need. So now we have two streams of data interwoven with area being the first uh, value followed by uh, an altitude value followed by an area and so on and so forth. So all we have to do now is partition this and to determine the size of each partitioned chunk, uh, we're just going to use a list length component and feed our list of attributes. And this is going to give us two. And so now we have a tree 
with 59 branches going from 0 to 58, which is good news because we have exactly 59 uh, trimmed surfaces. So now we can feed this to the values input, and we can see that we've created 59 attribute objects. Now, we don't need this to be in a tree, so I'm just going to flatten this. And now we're outputting 59 attribute, um, attribute objects. So how do we bake this into the document? Here we have a bake attributes component. I'm going to feed the geometry to the geometry input and then the attributes that we want to attach to our Rhino geometry. And now to actually bake out all of this information into the Rhino document, we have a couple of options. First, we have this bake button added here just for your convenience. Or if you want to do this programmatically, following some sort of a business logic inside of your definition, you can also connect some sort of a Boolean, um, Boolean output of some components to this bake input. I'm just going to use a button and I click bake, we immediately see the geometry appear in our document. And if we go to the properties tab and then navigate to the attribute user text panel, we can actually see the geometry or the data uh, that we attach to our geometry. So here we have our area information, altitude, and this is true for every piece of geometry that we just baked. So that's pretty exciting. We can do the same thing uh, to our panels. So if we just copy everything that we made and replace this with the facade input, I'm going to hide these two components, um, we can bake our facade geometry. And we can also see information about the area, um, and the height of the ground. And obviously, you can add whatever information that you want uh, here. It's just a matter of being able to generate that information in Grasshopper. Okay, so what if we have a bunch of different types of geometry that we want to bake into our document? What would be really useful is to be able to organize each of those streams of data into its own layer, just to keep things nice and neat. And TT Toolbox allows you to do exactly that. So what I'm going to do now is create a new panel uh, and say floor plates, floor plates, which is going to be the name of our layer. And I can just pass it into the layer input. The component immediately uh, notifies me that floor plates does not exist currently in my layer table in Rhino, um, but not to worry because TT Toolbox will automatically create this layer for us. And we can do the same thing uh, with the facade. So if we delete all of the geometry that we currently have in the scene and then bake both of our streams of data here, you can see that we now have two new layers, uh, one called floor plates, one called facade, and the geometry was placed in them. And like before, we still have all of the information um, available to us inside of Rhino, which is pretty exciting. Okay, so what about materials? Materials absolutely can be added as attributes to your geometry for baking using the toolbox as well. So here um, we have the set material component. And let's say we want to define some sort of a glass material um, to bake our facade panels. So if we look at the inputs, uh, you can see that we have the diffuse color, we have roughness, metalness, opacity, um, even emissivity, uh, if this is something that you need, a pretty standard set of inputs that define a material. So here 
let's do 0 0.2 for roughness. And since it's glass, we want to have it a little bit more metallic. And we also have the opacity. So, well, let's make it 0 0.2 as well. For the color, I'm going to use a swatch. And we can set this to something bluish. So, yeah, this looks good. And we'll pass this to the diffuse color input. So now the question is, how do we actually add this material to our attributes? Well, what you might notice is that the material component actually outputs an attribute. And all we have to do is pass our current set of attributes through the attribute input of this material component. And what the component will do, it will merge the color information that we de determined here with all of the data that we specified previously. So now our output is 464 attributes, which is the same number as the number of panels that we have. And I'm just going to swap out this wire. So now, if I disable Grasshopper Preview, um, I can go ahead and bake my geometry. Now you'll notice that, well, this doesn't look like much in the shaded view, but if we switch to rendered, all of a sudden this looks like glass. And with our floor plates added back into the mix, this looks even better. All right, so the last thing that we can do um, is we can try to programmatically define the color based on a certain attribute. So let's say you want to show a specific property um, of your facade panels or of your floor plates and save those as a material, which can be very helpful for, let's say, QC purposes. Well, let's delete everything we just baked and let's re-enable Grasshopper Preview. And what we can do here is let's take the area that we determined for each of the floor plates and let's express it as color. So I'm going to um, grab another one of these components. And since the floor plates are made out of, well, let's say concrete, I'm going to do 0 0.95 for roughness and then some low value like 0 0.1 for metalness. And then it's not a transparent material, so we'll give one for opacity. So how do we determine the diffuse color? Well, uh, let's take all of our values uh, for area, let's say, and we're going to create a bounce component. So bounds will create a domain from the smallest to the largest value that we have. And the next step uh, is to create a gradient. So in order to plug uh, this component into the gradient, I'm going to deconstruct um, our domain. Constructs domain. And if it's start and end, and then this will just tell the gradients sort of the bounds of the data that we're feeding it. And then I can just um, feed the data into the T input directly. I'm going to right click on the component, go to presets and pick a different preset. Now we can use this as the diffuse color for our geometry. And uh, just as before, we're going to feed our attributes through this material component and feed them back to uh, the bake component. I'm going to disable the grasshopper preview, hit bake, and voila. Uh, we have all of our geometry colored by an attribute that we generated from grasshopper and it's saved to its individual layer. And once again, if we click on this geometry, and go to properties, 
we still have all of the data um, for later use. All right, folks, and uh, that's our tutorial. Uh, this is how you bake attributes from Grasshopper into Rhino using Core Studio's TT Toolbox version 2.0, available on Food for Rhino. Bye-bye.